of Black Power Mixtape, 1967 to 1975. Well, to talk more about the book and the film, we're joined by two guests, the renowned American actor, film director, political activist Danny Glover, who co-produced the Black Power Mixtape, and Kathleen Cleaver, featured in the book and film, teaches at Emory Law School. She served as communications secretary of the Black Panther Party. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, the relevance of the Black Panther movement, the Black Power movement in the United States to today, Kathleen Cleaver. You just had a session of hundreds of people last night at the New School. Why do you think it still reverberates? It reverberates because it was about conditions. It's not an ideological situation where you believe something, but about the social and political economic conditions that black people were facing at the time and how to go about improving that. Civil rights were guaranteed under law, but that was not sufficient for our community. It was so excluded and so oppressed. And so it challenges directly racism on many different levels. If racism had been resolved, then maybe people wouldn't be so interested in black power. You were with the uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating, uh, Coordinating Committee, SNCC, uh, but you chose to leave for the Panthers. How did you go from SNCC to the Panthers? Um, it was not I chose to leave. The SNCC organization was based in Atlanta. I was working in Atlanta. We planned a black student conference. One of the the only speaker actually was Eldridge Cleaver. We met, fell in love, and he wanted me to come out and help him after Huey Newton got shot and was charged with uh, murdering a policeman and was facing the gas chamber. And he said, you've got to come out here. You've got to help me. We were in the same movement. We're in the Black Power movement, but different organizations. The Black Panther Party took on Black Power. In fact, it was one of the first organizations based on the concept of Black Power. So I moved to California and continued the Black Power struggle. And Danny Glover, how were you involved then? Well, I was a student at San Francisco State College uh, in 1967. and. Um, San Francisco State, uh, as well as the Bay Area, has always had a, been a, a beacon for radical thinking and radical thought. And um, it, it so happens that you found at San Francisco State a number of young men and women who had been a part of SNCC, part of the movement, uh, uh, Freedom Summer, et cetera, et cetera, in the South, were coming back and migrating to San Francisco. You had the free speech movement at Berkeley with Mario Sabio. You had uh, uh, what was happening in communities there, and also, also the emergence of the Black Panther Party as well. So I'm born and raised in San Francisco, and a native of San Francisco, and I would happen to be at San Francisco State at, and a member of the Black, Black, Black Student Union at that time in 1967, and on the Central Committee at that time. And, um, but, but something, you asked a question about the resonance of, of the Black Power Movement today. Too much of, of black political, of black radical political thought has been marginalized in this country historically. We go back around the beginning of the century with the Pan-African movement. We go back with the Communist Party and Socialist Party's involvement of key, key African Americans, both here domestically and internationally. And what, what the, the Black Power Movement did, not save, save that the Civil Rights Movement also gave voice to it, but not to the, the same con uh, context, gave voice to the struggle of Afro Africans around the world. So the Black Panther Party had relationships to liberation movements in Africa, uh, places like Angola, Mozambique.